Hi everyone, it's Becky here. Welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. Today we are going to Point Roberts again in Washington state. Sounds like pretty far away, right? But it's only about 20 to 30 minutes drive from the Vancouver area. And today we are visiting a cafe. It's called um, Saltwater Cafe. And it's right by the beach here at Point Roberts. Here we are outside the cozy looking cafe. They also have a lot of sitting areas outside. And I like this quote here. We're defined not by our border, but by our bond. So here is the inside of the cafe with a lot of bakery items. I ordered um, a serving of waffles with a lot of whipping cream on there. And with my gooseneck tripod attached to the edge of the table, I'm ready to sketch my late breakfast. So just sketching the square shape, which is a slightly distorted um, square, uh, a little trapezoid of the waffle, and then these four squares on the left uh, with berries and a little bit of whipped cream disrupting those perfect little shapes. And all of these squares inside the waffle is actually hollowed out cubes. Okay, so here I have a lot of um, freedom of expression by drawing the slices of strawberries over here and blueberries so i don't have too many squares to draw and um yeah even if we're drawing those squares those are carved out shapes that we can see three sides inside each square okay so now i am drawing this uh, big puff of whipped cream and then using pretty gentle hand pressure to get the swirl in okay this is kind of similar to drawing noodles the swirls of the, the whipped cream and then more blueberries and this waffle is hidden under the pile of whipped cream so that saves a lot of time and then more uh, slices of strawberries a couple of blueberries and then this third uh, piece of waffle with just a few squares to draw and a lot of these squares are blocked off by the blueberries and the strawberries um, adding a bit of accentuation around the edges of those uh, little square cubes Okay, so that's the waffles. Now I'm drawing the knife on the left side, also giving a sense of uh, thickness for the knife as well. The fork here on the right, and the thickness for the fork. And now I'm drawing this uh, large rectangular dish underneath everything, and then the brim of the dish, the shallowness, and the brim there on top. And um, yeah, I think that's it for the outline of my late breakfast. Now I'm drawing the ellipse shape of my coffee cup, the body shape and the cute handle. The brim is a latte, was it very bubbly. And adding with a final polish and um, now it's time to paint watercolors. Just starting to wet these areas with clear water so it's easier for the watercolors to spread out very smoothly. The very first layer is um, yellow ochre and a little bit of orange diluted with a lot of water just to show the, um, uh, the warm attractive look of these waffles. Yeah, they need to be uh, this saturated yellow, yellow orange and punching on a bit more concentrated yellow ochre mixed with a bit of orange for these hollowed out areas of the, uh, the square cubes. Yeah, so those carved out little square cubes, they are of a slightly darker value of yellow or yellow brown, I think because they were closer to the iron of the uh, waffle machine and the, the, the brims surrounding these little squares is of a lighter value or a diluted version of yellow, uh, yellow orange. Now I'm punching on these uh, juicy colors of magenta for the strawberry slices. Again, playing with water control. The flesh inside the strawberry is of a lighter pink value. The skin of the strawberry is a darker pink value. And then cobalt blue mixed with a bit of royal purple for these blueberries. Very quick dashes of brush strokes. And leaving some little spots of highlights for the, uh, the shine on the blueberries, which is quite important. Now, just uh, putting on a super diluted leftover yellow for the whipped cream, and that's it. It should be staying very much white. And um, a super saturated um, cadmium yellow for the exterior of the mug. Uh, my own bluish gray for the dish. 
and a bit of reflective color of yellow on that shadow on, on the bottom of the waffle. Okay, so the original colors of objects, uh, they usually like to reflect their colors onto their shadows. And I like to use purple to shade something yellow, as I just did for the mug, just the, uh, the left side, because the sun is coming from the right. Adding some retouches of shaded areas for the white dish. And then mixing royal purple and cobalt blue, diluted with a lot of water for the shadows of everything. A more concentrated blue for the very bottom edge. So the shadows that I found, you know, is to be always very important to help the objects come alive from the paper. Some final polish for the surface of the coffee, leftover yellow orange, final polish for the shadows, sharper edges with a, a deeper blue, and that's very much it. Now I'm ready to sketch this um, pretty interesting view in front of me of the coffee house and its surrounding foliage and some people. Okay, so now I'm gonna spend about three minutes using my pencil to do the layout. So I wanna show you my penciling plot process that I like to do these days um, because I'm doing a lot more complicated urban sketches that I wanna include all of the elements that I wanna include and making sure that the, the sizes and the proportions are the way that I want them to be on paper. So as you can see, I'm just only layering out the largest chunks of shapes for these buildings, as well as the umbrella and the foliage behind. And that's very much it. Okay, now it's time to draw, have fun drawing more spontaneously with my fountain pen, starting with this happy lady over here waiting hope for her friends to enjoy their brunch together. And the umbrella right above her, the cute little canopy of the umbrella, the other side of the canopy and then drawing her friend, wearing sunglasses, they're happily chatting, enjoying this uh, beautiful afternoon together, uh, this tree here on the other side of the street, and the car on the other side. So these shapes on the left side of my sketch are, are mainly background details, um, like the houses and the um, electricity poles that I always like to include for a sense of dimension and perspective. There's another house and the um, electricity pole using very simple shapes like uh, triangles, trapezoids, and small squares to define the windows and rooftops for those houses. And then these loose uh, kind of abstract outlines for the trees Yeah, and then another electricity pole over there. Now I'm starting to draw this foreground. It's like a shed. Um, it belongs to the uh, cafe owner. And under the car in a slight distance. Drawing this um, bush. Covering up most of this shed house and the window behind. Which looks like an eye. And then this American flag attached to the exterior of the cafe building and um, a chair using those parallel lines to define the exterior wooden planks and the stripes on the American flag. And the entrance area of the coffee house is ex extremely foreshortened. As you can see, the triangle there is very squished. And then another little roof. And this is a little free library over here right outside the cafe. And then defining the edge over here between the entrance and the side of the coffee shop house. More important uh, medium shapes, the wooden planks exterior, and then the rooftop using these slanting lines for that shed. And um, yeah, adding the chimney for the uh, coffee shop and these little lights dangling from the eave. The window of the coffee shop and the leaves of this uh, bush right beside and a little bar for the railing. Some more cute little leaves growing on stalks. So when I'm doing urban sketching, as I always mentioned, I love to include foliage surrounding buildings rather than just dry buildings. And uh, here we have this apple tree here on the very right and the railings in between the um, 
the leaves. And it's okay to have a bit of overlapping lines because this, this part is a little um, complicated. There's no mistakes, just personal expressions. And uh, finishing finishing off the bottom, checking my ink level of my fountain pen, adding a bit of details behind this window. Okay, and it takes quite a bit of patience to draw those uh, bushes with leaves, and then these uh, very quick horizontal lines to define the wooden plank of the exterior of the uh, yellow coffee house. Final bits of leaves around the uh, around the edge of my sketch. This is the apple tree leaf with some uh, apples hidden in between. So we actually harvested some of the apples with permission from the owner. Now I'm using quick dashes to define the rooftop texture. The chimney there in the distance. A few more leaves. And that's it for the line work and um, the view in front of me. There's actually a, a few more customers enjoying their uh, brunch. Here is a look of my finished line work. So here I am bathing in a warm afternoon sun and I want to do as much um, urban sketching as possible before the colder and rainy days are here. Now I'm ready to have fun with watercolors. As always, I'm going to start painting the sky area because the sky is always in the very back of everything. Before painting watercolors, I just want to add these electricity wires that um, really give the sense of three dimension to the little streetscape over here. These parallel slanting lines going down towards the right. Yep, sense of perspectives right there. Okay, now I am ready to paint watercolors. Oh, I think I forgot a few more lines. Yeah, more wires connecting electricity to these houses. Now. I'm just wetting the sky area with clear water, ready for a little bit of uh, blue gradients. Starting with the very top, uh, using a mix of cobalt blue and cerulean. Using horizontal brush marks to stay neat. And um, okay, now I'm gonna mix a little bit of uh, lime green into the blue mixture for the bottom half of the sky that I always see of a more turquoise hue. Okay, don't forget the negative spaces between the, the leaves there, and that's my sky. I'm going to keep it really quickly done and simple. Now, I'm going to paint the first layers for everything, which had a nice yellow glow from the warm sunshine. So these colors are actually diluted yellow ochre. Okay, and now I'm ready to paint the first layer for this uh, coffee shop exterior. It's a mix of lemon yellow and orange, a really cheerful color. And just keeping this first layer the lightest value that I see. Now I'm adding some mid-tones of stronger orange. And just let this uh, warm orange to diffuse into the previous uh, undried yellow. So these two colors are kind of blending together, nice and soft. And uh, next layer for the roof is burnt sienna mixed with a little bit of raw umber. And then uh, using red brown, a mix of red into burnt sienna for the edges of that shed. Um, this coffee shop has a really cool color contrast that the borders of the windows and the edges have this blue turquoise color and using the leftover bluish gray to paint the shadow. The bush landing on the outside of the shed as well as the shadow from the, uh, the roof of the shed. Now adding some stronger values of uh, orange brown. Now this is a mix of orange and burnt sienna and um, using thinner brush strokes and leaving some lighter gaps in between for the fold of the wood laying on the exterior of the coffee shop house. and keep using cobalt blue um, to shade some of the areas, especially this door area, and also spot some reds, matching the colors of the uh, strawberries for the stripes on the American flag and for that uh, free library. For the inside of the window, I'm just using diluted yellow-orange for the luminosity of the indoor lighting. 
、um, some more turquoise blue for these edges, wrapping around、uh, the shapes of the、uh, coffee house. Now I'm ready to paint the foliage, starting with a warm yellow green, as usual. This is the mix of yellow ochre and a tiny bit of hooker's green, and slightly higher ratio of hooker's green for the higher part of this trace, depending on my observation. And just let、um, a two or three different kinds of yellow greens. Uh, merge together into a loose wash. Now, wet onto wet, I would say this is the second layer.、Um, this is hooker screen mixed with a little bit of、uh, lime green, using quick little dotting brush strokes to depict the foliage texture, leaving some parts of the previous layer, the first layer, untouched. Those are actually the highlight spots of those trees popping out, catching more sunshine. Um, and now mixing the shade color of green using hooker screen mixed with a bit of burnt sienna, mostly for the bottom of these trees, maybe for those sharp、uh, edges on the very top, depending on my observation. And don't forget these bushes surrounding the coffee house and the shed. So yeah, again, starting up with a pretty lighter value of yellow green for these leafy areas. Yeah, and just use pretty thin little dotting brushstrokes,、uh, very gentle hand pressure, and it's okay that you don't have to paint inside those little leaf shapes.、Uh, your watercolors could flow outside those outlines and punching on those red magenta for those lovely little apples, and then don't forget this big tree here, right on the other side, using yellow green and these yellow houses.、Uh, this one is a red brown one. Okay, and、uh, yeah, this area looks very happy and motivating. Okay, and then using blue purple to shade the interior through the window. A stronger blue, and another layer for the shadows, so the contrast is sharper. Yeah, the reflection of the leaves on the shed is just so beautiful. Some final little polish with leftover bluish gray, and then painting.、Uh, This umbrella was a diluted blue. The inner area is actually a shade of blue, a more concentrated version of cobalt blue and cerulean. And、um, final colors is using leftover yellow brown for the electricity poles, and using super duper thin brush strokes just for the very left edge of these poles to shade them a little bit. Okay, looking around me. Sun is still shining, nice and bright. Now I'm adding the final polish for my、uh, little painting. I want to shade、um, the coffee house a bit more, and also these leafy greens with a more intense hooker screen. Yeah, especially the bottom part, not getting a lot of sunshine. And keep adding a little bit more contrast with hooker screen. Maybe mixing a tiny bit of burnt sienna into it. And the wooden railings, the chimney there. Now painting the skin color for these two ladies using a mix of red and orange, and their outfits just using my memory. I think one was wearing blue, the other one purple.、Uh, last bit of green for the lawn there on the very bottom, closer to the edge, and then using leftover gray to shade those cars. Bit of stronger green for this big tree here, and then choppy brush stroke is fine. It shows the texture of your trees and bushes. All right, and lastly, I want to paint the shadow、um, on the bottom of the eave over here, which is drama in this sketch, and、um, just a mix of brown and a bit of purple. Okay, and that's very much it. Here's me in action, finishing up the filming, taking the phone off the gooseneck tripod. Here is a look of my finished sketch. It took me almost two hours、uh, to finish this, but、um, I had a really wonderful time sitting here in the sun. Thank you so much for watching this video, everyone. If you like it, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. So I update my channel with two to three new videos every week.
here is a preview of my next video and I'll see you again very soon next time. Have a great day everyone. Bye!